Welcome everyone, Kostin here with another early campaign guide for Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. People have asked for it, so I am going to do Scarbrand. He was the second most popular option on the poll I did recently. Scarbrand starts in the Barrier Idols. He starts at war with the Tom Knots, and the mistake you may make is to actually wage the war against the Tom Knots. You don't want to waste your time with them. They are a genuine waste of time, resources, and energy. Destroy this initial army, and then worry about the rest of the campaign, the proper campaign. Now, here's what you need to know about Scarbrand. His position, his enemies, all that, irrelevant. He's a wrecking ball. No one's going to be able to stand against him. So instead, how do you play Scarbrand? What do you do with his campaign? Well, one of the things, that, two, there are two things that are going to matter. One is your income. You are heavily reliant, probably the most of any faction in the entire game, no, by far the most of any faction in the game, on post-battle loot. Your economy, until you get a lot of provinces, a lot of regions, is going to be pretty awful. So first things first, I'm going to demolish this particular building. This is going to get me 900. Get this to level 2 so I can get a cultist of corn. And then I'll demolish that as well. Okay. Now... The thing, that's the first thing. The second thing is his bloodletting meter. It is pretty good if you get it up, but if you don't have it up, yeah, there's going to be uh, some problems. So we need to get Scarbrand involved in a lot of fights. The issue with the Top Knots territory is that it's pretty spread out. I mean, sure, if I start heading along the coast and start going north and start dealing with Warzag, things can get better, but that is going to be quite a few turns. And then there's another issue. The way Scarbrand works as a faction is that he is very much a guy who wants to raise settlements, to raise blood hosts or to get skulls, whatever you want. Um, but the issue is that Malagor over here, he's going to take the Martian Kermarch um, before he can take this particular settlement. Or this element, and he is um, going to make it difficult for you to be able to get uh, to rebuild the settlements. You're not going to do that manually. There is a research that you're going to want to get the uh, spread rage. The chances are, however, that Malagor may be able to activate his Hearthstone before the settlements come up, and because they're also spread out, and there's a lot of AI factions, etc you may not be able to do so before the AI retakes those elements, forcing you to go back uh, there. So yeah, you can go for the Tom Knots plan, but I don't think it's especially good. I also don't think fighting Cetro or the Tomb Kings is good because the territory itself would just cost you 30% more to get buildings up, and you already have enough economic issues. The terrain you're suited for is the wasteland and the mountains. So that's where we're going to go for. And because we need to fight a lot of battles one after another, and armies are not that common, and most battles are minor settlement siege battles, we are going to go for the mountains. But which mountains? Well, the best cluster of territory early on is over here. However, if you do decide to rush over here, chances are you're going to meet uh, a lot of armies. Queek and, uh, uh, Queek and Gorfang, right? So instead... What you are going to do is you're going to get a non-aggression pack for 10 turns with Quick, take advantage of that situation, and you're then going to march south. And my goal, marching south, will be to either kill Orc, but certainly at the very least to take Karag or Hund. Killing Forek does have some ben benefits. Kar Karagzorn is in a pretty decent spot. It's relatively safe, etc. It does have a gold mine, but it's not strictly necessary to deal with him. Uh, you could just uh, do some damage to these fellows, to Arakos, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. This is legendary, very hard, but first we do have a battle.
All right, so let's get going. I do start with some blood letters and I am going to charge straight ahead with Mr. Scarbrand. The enemy will surround me. Poor bastards. They don't know what they're in for. You would wonder who would start this fight. Would it be the orcs? I mean, they're pretty... yeah. They're very, um... Inclined towards fighting. Get these guys, get them in. And send the, do the hounds to charge right there. Now, clumping them all together like this is uh, the ideal. Uh, scenario from my perspective. Scar Scarbrand is certainly going to take some damage. Gonna take these guys out because they got intercepted by the Savage Orc Boar Boys. And we are... I'm going to pull, pull the Hounds out. I love a starting battle, I gotta say. I think he's got the harshest campaign start. In the entire game. Not hard emphasis on that point, because calling Scarbrand's campaign hard is a, is an insult to people who actually do have a hard campaign. Because it isn't a hard campaign. Uh, rather, it's just really harsh, because you don't really have room for error. Your economy is not going to be able to support you... Um, Okay, they're going down. They're going down. Let's take him out. Now yeah, don't go in a fight against blow letters. The blood must flow. The damage has been done. Now, with that battle up and Scarbrand always gets movement points after a battle. But that battle per uh, one, I'm actually going to retreat. I'm not going to advance. I'm going to retreat and start making you know, to make blood letters. But it's like you also have that's a few skulls, favor, replenishment. Let's go with replenishment. Okay. And you have just enough over here to move Scarbrand into uh, to move Scarbrand back, and you also get Room Marcher, Inspiring Presence, and it's time to pull back. Blood letters are expensive, absolutely, uh, but the thing is, you get the structure that's for the income. Uh, you don't need it though, and you can get more income from some other structures. He's gonna increase the mobility, probably should have get, gotten that. I can also get more through Unholy Manifestations, though it does feel like the movement you're getting isn't quite as significant. Now, Scarbrand does have a nice uh, skill tree. I feel like they've nerfed his potential a bit. His weapon is pretty solid as well. He uh, gets 15 campaign movement range after raising a settlement, and he also gets recruitment cost when in enemy or raised territory, so global recruitment basically, uh, is cheaper if you are playing as Carbrand. Okay. So that's the first turn. Karag Orund is going to be next. We're gonna go over there, we're gonna siege it, and we're going to take it out. Now, if I have to use an unholy manifestation in order to get to that settlement, fine. I would like to have more units. Maybe I wait an extra turn or something like that for it. Uh, the benefit, by the way, of going south first and then going north is you are... Okay, so enemy, army, attrition, hero, recruit rank. Let's get that. Now... If I do this, 
the king. I crave bloodshed. Okay. Um. Okay, cause victory. There is no army that stands against me. Now in this case, uh, yeah, let's just get all of these guys here. Gonna be a bit careful this time around. I don't want Scarbrand to take too much damage in this uh, particular battle. If he does, it's not really going to suit me. But yeah, these guys. They're not gonna really do a lot of damage, are they? Pros and cons of using demons. When they die... Now, this is a pathetic army, by the way. It's designed to be pathetic. Okay. Victory. Alright, I have almost 5,000 skulls. Um, I am going to... 1% is not gonna count. Now I am going to level them up, improve the blood letters, and also get this particular ability. Five turns, campaign movement range, construction time for all buildings, two more units for blood hosts. Would lose some units. Well, you guess what? I'm not gonna do. Okay, there are two gates over here. One is going to see some of these fellows marching in, though not all of them, and the other one is going to see Scarbrand. <laughs> uh, imagine Scarbrand showing up at your doorstep. Terror doesn't even begin to describe it. Can Greenskins even feel fear? Yeah, they do. They don't know what fear is. The Gate Smasher. The Destroyer. Like, he really is a powerful gate smasher, by the way. Um, let's get the unit of blood letters over there. There's... Hello! I'm home! Anything good to eat? We'll take your skulls, all the same. Just in time for dinner. Alright, they're gonna break through that gate once they're through. Let the rampage go. Alright, pulling him a bit back. I'm gonna keep those Chaos War Hounds safe. You know, honestly, I feel like Scarbrand should be able to smash down walls. Just my personal idea on uh, stuff like this. Okay, those blood letters are gone. Alright, 
Let's get a 24 melee attack. Pretty much every hit that they're uh, doing is going to land. Right, they're gonna pull back a bit. And we're gonna get another blood letter unit soon. Might have been actually better if, if I had to attack this particular gate. At least with Scarbrand himself. Not necessarily all the units. Wrecking Ball continues. Our units incoming. These two fellows are going to go deal with those orc boys over there while uh, the rest will deal with the goblins. I think though if I kill these units here, let me just speed up, I mean it's a pretty simplistic battle tactic. Go and smash everything that stands in your way. Not a whole lot of depth uh, to it, is there? Alright, keep moving, keep moving. Gonna get the dogs in. Alright, Scarbrand, he's gonna go over there. Alright, we've won. Another great and glorious victory. Now you should be warned that the top knots are likely going to try and take their settlement back, uh, the death gorge back. Do you care? Mm, kind of, a bit. Now over here, I'm going to get a war amphitheater and I'm also going to start recruiting some units for Scarbrand. Sadly, it's only cast warriors. I mean, they're good, they're okay. It does feel to me like a lot of the time uh, when you take a settlement, uh, what you generally end up with are uh, cast warrior, like the structure to get cast warriors, not the portal. I prefer the portal, honestly. Uh, if I'm being quite blunt about it. Now with this building, like this will really, really help in, in multiple ways. Because when the top knots will come for you, and they will, because you only start a war with them. Um, when the top knots do decide to show their face, uh, they're going to... Well, we're gonna take advantage of that situation. Now, it's interesting the settlement layout. Like, is going after Arakos really worth it? Maybe, maybe not. What's, uh, his, like, we've already reached, uh, bloodletting level 2. If I do decide to go south, um, after Forek, it's quite likely going to drop. Though, not necessarily so. Is fighting Forik a hard battle? Somewhat. Get the Blood Host, though. He's not gonna be a, much of an issue, really. I mean, he does have... A, uh, he does start with one settlement. I'm not sure if he's gonna get... I mean, Forik has destroyed their original army over there. The original army of Arakos. Okay. Uh, let's get going. Now, it is interesting to think about... The attrition over here. Alright, so we got the last plateau. Uh, let's see, is there a spot? I don't want to take attrition. At the same time, I don't want to waste my 
time dealing with this. I'll raise Arakos uh, to the ground. Just keep moving. I may not ha end up with enough skulls to be able to take four excelment, but that's fine. Now remember, one of the things Scarbrand has is replenishment in enemy territory. So moving like this, like you don't you don't play Scarbrand defensively. You play him extremely aggressively, or you don't play him at all, or less. Like you always want to keep moving. I'd rather eat a squeak. <laughs> All right, let's fight this battle. Now one thing, by the way, to point out is Scarbrand used to excel in the realms of chaos in a situ in a much harder start than this. Why do I say harder start? Well, he started that war with a bunch of demonic factions, and the problem, if you will, in that I, I do need to be a bit careful. I don't. I'm gonna have to deal with Forex. So uh, let's send these guys over yonder. Okay. Got some blood letters over there. Uh, and the problem with that is that the towers that the that they have. Tend to be hard, tend to be strong. The towers the orcs have, yeah, they're not necessarily a joke, but they're significantly weaker than that. Okay, I may have misjudged that. Okay, let's keep moving. I'm gonna pull this one unit out, send the chaos warriors there. Send Scarbrand back in. It is ridiculous. Scarbrand with uh, melee buffs? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I understand like overall that it's a beneficial change, but holy crap, does do you feel it like in a battle like this? Or maybe it's just the fact I'm fighting greenskins and not demons, which you know might contribute to the situation being what it is. holding their own decently well. No, they're breaking. Finally. Barricade is being constructed here. Alright, those guys have fallen. They're wavering. Keep advancing. Give them the melee attack benefit. Scarbrand does not care for your barricades. Oh, 
Are they making progress here? Well, they are. Just slowly. Far too slowly for my liking. And I take the control points with him. Eliminate that barricade. Make things easier. Followers of chaos. The I'll just reform there. Get him in a better situation in the fight. They are certainly doing quite a bit of damage. Goblins are coming back in. Chaos Warriors! Chaos Command! The Exiled Warriors! Hold on, I haven't captured it yet. Need to wait a bit more. Yes! Alright, send the Chaos Warriors after another unit. And send Scarbrand after these archers. That might be it. At least for those fellows. These guys are still holding their line. But for how long? Let's get Scarbrand to charge right there. If it hits these guys in the back, yeah. They're not gonna last for a very long time. Alright, barricades destroyed there. Okay. Pull these guys back. Oh, gosh. Seriously? What the fuck? Oh, I mean, I was looking at the wrong thing there. Okay, fair enough. At long last, victory. Got more skulls. They lasted quite a long time too. And that was perhaps the more surprising thing about all of this. Alright, good. 400 skulls. Let's get blood for the blood god, get the blood hose going. I am also going to level him up again, get uh, skull takers and that's going to be the end of the leveling for the moment. 
Which moves Carbrand to hit. Now that's an army that we got there. The one thing I want to do is get this entire skill tree, because all of this stuff is what makes... Like, you want to get Scarbrand 7, and then you just kind of want to stop getting skill points. Now, if Auric takes this element... Let's see what he does. If need be, like, like yeah, the blood host or multiple blood hosts. Who says we need to use only one? But I think these two will be enough, and I can disband that second one and uh, and keep moving. Let me think about it. No. Okay. Person. Right, one more turn. Now, the one thing to be said about all of this. Is that getting those a thousand skulls. Uh, might very me very much be useful. You know what's the issue in, go in dealing with goblins? You can't bloody well find them. I no joke. No joke. some of these fellows into it. Alright, the Wrecking Ball continues his thing. Get Scarbrand out. If you start, seek out some water. Eradicate them. Kill stories of good Scarbrand. Alright, we got reinforcements, but we're not gonna use them. Balance of power will be affected okay. over by the units there. I think. So they're going to be far more likely to start breaking apart. So be it. Alright, there's one unit of goblins there. I'm going to summon some blood letters on top of that. And I'm going to send Scarbrand to help out as well. Chaos warriors of core. Oh. 
Child one, glory leads us on. Ouch. Yeah, getting hit by car brand is getting hit by freight train. Oh, he's taking his own. Uh, he's taking a decent amount of damage in return as well. Chaos Warriors! Yes! Boss! Well, it's pity they despawned. So now we're gonna attack Forrick. He might have recruited a good number of pr troops, but... Well, he's just gonna kill himself right now, by the looks of it. By the looks of it... Yeah, they I can do stupid shit. <laughs> that is really stupid shit. Over. We're gonna get serial killing. Just gonna wait to turn. Gonna get more increased mobility. Physical resistance as well. 
Get this to level two. Yes, get the bloodletter recruitment option. And we wait. Well, I mean, if Forrick is not gonna march, uh, is not gonna do anything, I guess I'll just take his uh, precious little city from us. It is best to let, let the blood hosts be the ones that attack a city. Like, you don't care about... Like, when it comes down to it, you don't care about the minor settlements, because you can always resell them, but you need to control uh, the capital of a province, the provincial capital, so to speak. You need to control that in order to claim it. What is going on here? What a neat, if the nice little bug. <laughs> I like the massive amount of uh, corn corruption that's already in this region. This entire army, perfectly disposable. They could also win the siege on their own. They, the Caspon do incredible uh, damage, by the way. That isn't to say I won't use Scarbrand. Alright, we're in. We're in. Gonna get those exalted blood letters to do some damage. Send this gas uh, spawn after the quarrelers. Alright, the blood crushers are rushing it. Really. Gonna get that melee attack sort of there. Now look, if if I don't get enough skulls this time, I'll just hack this element. Because I don't care if it's level 1, <laughs> honestly. over there collapsing over here let's get the victory point the principal one blood crushers are going to go in there yeah. 
Gonna take some points. I don't know where the rest. Yeah, there we go. Picture. Now let's see where four it goes to. Alright, we're gonna fight another battle, sack it again, fight another battle, sack it again, all and all and all, again and again and again. I just need 200 skulls to be able to take this element, that is all. I wanna occupy it, of course. How do I? Herald of Khan! Slaughter! Rejoice! Yeah, maybe holding the south is not too important. Khan! Forbidden! I think I would have preferred the straight up fight. <laughs> Not joking. By the looks of it, though, he is there. Or he's run away. I have no clue. Alright. Goodbye, Fork. I'm gonna get more skulls. A great deal more skulls. Because I don't need a blood host. Not to deal with the vampire counts. The vampire count skeletons and zombies yeah i mean gorst would kick my ass probably but not these guys not the silver host so much for the ultra conservative dwarf My last shall encourage them. Leave only corpses. No, destroy.
All right, let us fight this. Right, so reinforcements are going to come from that side. So Scarbrand is going to take that bridge. All of these units, which, by the way, I'm going to dismiss this army after this battle. Uh, all of these guys are going to advance here. I don't like how the AI just instantly rebuilds the settlement, though. <laughs> Alright, those cast spawn are going to do a pretty good job in that situation. Their damage dealing ability is quite something. I would say I don't want to lose uh, <laughs> too many troops here. Alright. But they should be able to do quite fine in in the struggle here. I'm right, gonna give them some melee attack so they can do even more damage. <laughs> it says a lot about Scarband that he's faster than the wolves. <laughs> I gotta say. I need to pull him back. He's just getting hammered too much by those iron breakers. Just pull him back so he's not taking too much damage. Come Scarbrand. Get these guys out. They're fast, but they're not particularly strong. get them out. If he dies, that does hurt. with gray weapons over on that side I'm 
gonna send some bloodletters up there as well. And Scarbrand on the north side. The nice thing about blood letters is that they're actually good against armored units. So the heavily armored dwarves are not really a match against me necessarily. But yeah, it is becoming a quick issue that they're also quite uh, quite capable in their own right of doing a lot of damage against Scarbrand in particular. They're finally breaking. Yeah, dwarves don't break. Not easily, anyway. Once we take that, uh, paths will open, I think. Or will they? I suppose not necessarily. But there are other options. I'll be careful and mindful. Where is Fork? There he is. Been looking all over for him. Well, I guess it would make sense that you put on the victory point. Take this tower. Alright, he's gonna die over there against them. Alright, more towers taken out. Alright, 
Chaos Warriors of Corn! Alright, those Corlers are, are out of ammo. And poor Forrick. It is finally over. I think. Well, Forrick is not gonna collapse so easily. Unbreakable bastard that he is. Once he's dead, it's GG. Okay. Skulls. Thank you. Yeah, that would have been nice for Scarbrand himself, right? I mean, I kind of wish, like, the reinforcement armies also got the defeat rate. But I'm not particularly concerned. Okay, so that's done. Dealt with. Now what do we do with Scarbrand? Well, my goal is to get him over here. He's level 9. Get uh, not the brass color, the thick skin. For him, get... Deadly Blade. Now Scarbrand is in a pretty decent spot, by the way. Yeah, just gonna pull out. Defeating Forek gave me a lot of money, a lot of bloodletting, and importantly, I got some experience for uh, Scarbrand, got some experience for my units. Getting Scarbrand to level 13 with skill points so you can get the blood host benefits is significant. Also, gave me skulls, like what I've done here. The top knots may be coming up for my capital, but I'm not particularly concerned. They might declare war on someone else anyway. Yep. The Too powerful. I mean, if they take it, I'll just take it back. <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, I'll appreciate that even. Is expensive, I admit. But what am I gonna do with money? If they, yeah, if they attack, whatever. Honestly, I'm quite tempted to just fight that battle manually. I'll tell you why. Uh, demonic settlements have incredibly powerful towers. I could likely beat that just by massing them on one choke point doing some and uh, building towers or even if I don't beat that it's, they're gonna take ridiculous damage all right so that movement range for blood hosts and after that you want to get the skull harvesting you can also get skulls for the skull throne, but yeah. Okay. That is a red. Ridiculous amount of money that I just do not have.
Now, it's actually good they came for this particular settlement. Though it was more vulnerable, so it makes sense. Uh, it's good they came for this particular settlement instead of going for uh, Death Gorge. Though, you don't care if you lose your settlements. The income you're gaining from settlements is not really that important. Now, yeah, look at these guys. Oh, they raided it. Boohoo. And they did take quite a bit of damage too from it. That is a decent amount of skulls too. Yeah, just get some more units. Alright, he is a level 11. Now, get a rebellion there? Nah, uh, old problem. In fact, getting a rebellion is a feature, not a bug. More bloodletting, more skulls, more income, more movement range. Lord. Now the battle for... Um... Well, I guess people do fear Scarbrand that much. He's level 12. Rebellion will spring up now. Alright, let's see where we got it. There. They won't be able to take this element in a single turn. Unless they have something with Siege Attacker. Walls do help. Who the funk? Point of fact, I probably should have recruited some units of Scarbrand. Oh well. Okay, so this is a cult, right? Whenever. So I can get. Um... So by having this particular cult, I can get skulls per turn, which would be nice, right? It's pretty cheap too. So I'm not breaking the bank by getting that. Horn Rebellion. Against Scarbrand. Alright, 
Yep. He still doesn't have Siege Attacker. Very good. And over here. Now the income from raiding is not just that, but I'm gonna get the Blood Feast. For him. Increase mobility. Can't use it for three more turns. Now, these kind of cults are actually really nice for Scarbrand, and I'll tell you why. Not just because, oh, you get some nice benefits. That does count, sure, but it's more. Like, if you start, like, there are certain factions of corn around the map, right? If you start. Wow. Non aggression. It was weird with the beastmen. Want the tip? If you're playing a faction of chaos and you see a beastman faction like that, uh, get the non aggression pack with them. You'll gain a lot of money. Because beastmen don't really use money for much. So, and they do have uh, a lot of money as an AI faction. They're not the Tomb Kings level of, of stuff. Now, if I can defeat that army of the top knots, I might actually just be able to get a lot of income. And yeah. And then march south and deal with uh, Lamia. Once Lamia is defeated, and this is the sweet, sweet spot, I can. You know, sack the settlements, whatever, sell them to uh, sell them to their leader, etc, etc, etc. Uh, his bloodletting is probably gonna go down there. You're not getting out of here. He's gonna have to go the long way around. Or you can attack. Even in Forest March, Scarbrand's gonna kick his ass. <laughs> he may have a Wyvern. We have a Scarbrand. Take your sh And this is a case where I don't give a sh flat, right, uh, I don't give a rat's ass about what the resolve may do. Yep, there he is doing his thing. He's at war with the top knots. That might be a good thing though. Just yeah, Mal Malagor is going to. Yeah, I'll take it. Alright, so income from our post battle loot is finished. That's unlocked tier 2. What do you want in tier 2? Well, you can get income from all buildings. The skull for the skull throne can be improved. Let's get that. Actually, that's the best one, I think. And over here. What the heck is Elbaris doing of all things? Okay. Alright, I'm running out of money. I could cancel some buildings, get some more money. Yeah, I'm just gonna cancel that for the moment. Uh, since I can't afford this entire army. Now scram. <laughs> that's the issue with Scarbrand, and I, I imagine that's the reason people want to know how you get this campaign rolling. 
Is this the most optimal path? Hmm, not necessarily. If you want probably the most optimal path, you could just head north, really. Okay, he's got fucked off. It's like, yeah, I'm not dealing with that. It's weird that the AI generally ignores that, or the game tells me that the AI generally ignores that. Next turn, I use that. Public order has stabilized. You can thank good old Dada, Daddy Corn for his what, what? help. What? What you want? All right, I'm gonna end my non-aggression pack with so, yes. with him. Guess who's next on the menu? Now the thing to know about Scarbrand's little army over here is it's not just like an early game army, it's a mid game army. It's more powerful than most other armies that can be thrown against you. Like, even ignoring the fact that Scarbrand himself is a powerhouse. Alright, Brutal of Visage. Yeah, let's get that. The leadership benefit is more than his survivability, which is already pretty good. He's already in a pretty good spot survival wise. Alright, let's do this. Ah, uh, yeah, I probably should have used this, shouldn't I? It is sometimes hard to turn all of that shit down, I admit. But we keep on. And this is the point where, yeah, you just don't stop, do you? Now I don't quite have the movement range to reach there, <laughs> but that's fine. Let's get the blood feast for him. Uh, get kill for him. Get some more corruption. No, I summoned those armies, but do I need them in any way? Uh, that one. Like it's going to sack the settlement and then occupy it. Like I don't want to hold this region. It's a bit pointless as I see it. And then we're uh, Well, as far as I'm concerned, Kalida can either be meet on the menu or you can make deals with her. 
it's probably better to make deals with her. Having someone to, you know, not declare war on you can be nice. It's a very unlike Scar brand, but I mean, you can sell Lamia to her. She'll give you money for it. Maybe not a lot of money, but all the same. This is why I came south. It's hard to ignore this kind of stuff. Okay. Now what would you do here? Well, I could upgrade the champions, sure. I could give him casualty replenishment. Or start improving that particular line. Because I do have quite a few gas warriors. Get Foe Seeker. For him, get more casualty replenishment. Alright, Kalida. You are keeping me from my purpose. Speak quickly. Well, I guess uh question is, yeah. Disband that. The income situation will be resolved soon enough. And they've got other issues to deal with in Klein Mortkin. Now, can I declare war? Do not bore me, thing. I take no. spine for my not yet. Do I need to? Mm, not necessarily. But I would say income is going to become an issue. Man, of all the times for me to take a different uh, region in the province, it's got to be the shit one. <laughs> yeah, you can get some good income once you get the, all the regions in a province. It takes time. But eventually you can get, you can maintain multiple armies, get the good units. I mean, Bloodhosts themselves will have good units, right? No, oh, actually it didn't. All right. I had to do for whatever reason. The harbinger of doom. Seek new slaughter. Replenish our brutal energies. You dare engage with me? My will. You can have it. Yeah. It is night. Now, I could leave Queek for later, to be honest with you guys. Control is no no concern at the moment. And one building that is actually good is that one. This will also give me Chaos Warriors, but... Yeah, don't know if I want to spend the money right now. Okay. So, that, that's all you really need to know about Scar, Scar Brand. Go south, take over uh, Forex territory, you get the powerful army, you get a lot of mo uh, money in general. Um, so a lot of troops. And a significant benefit here is Queek and... Queek and Karakazul and all these guys, they're just gonna slaughter each other. 
That's all they're gonna do. And that the person who benefits from that is gonna be your tr yours truly. I don't need blood first attrition. Let's get spoils of bad. And I'm gonna summon a blood host over there. Next turn. Bam. This is all you need to know. Quasinier signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications. After this point, like, really, just take all of this. Like, you've got the free shot. No one's gonna be able to stop you. Quick is not gonna be able to stop you. He may try. He's. He's not even gonna be able to march his army in time to stop me from raiding as a blood 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 host here. And with the blood host armies, you just can't be stopped. Cosine signing out.